In this module, we're going to talk about the initial configuration of the ACI fabric, how to stand it up, as well as configuring the out-of-band networking and NTP and why you would want to have NTP as part of your ACI uh, configuration. We'll talk about access policies, external facing interface configurations, and pools in ACI such as VLAN pools, ACI domains, physical and VMM. We'll talk about attachable entity profiles, as well as VPC configuration, how you configure VPC in ACI, and troubleshooting access policies. So let's get started. ACI initial configuration overview. Before we get started, let's map some of the traditional network constructs, the seven layer OSI model, to how they match up with constructs inside of ACI. So we've got, oops, we've got uh, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, six, and seven. So layer one is physical, layer two is data link, layer three is network, uh, layer four is transport, and then layer five, six, and seven, session, presentation, and application, we typically lump together as layer seven, or layer five through seven. On the ACI side, the physical layer maps up to access policy, AEPs, do and uh, domains, both physical and VMM. So that's how we physically plug things into ACI. On the data link layer, we've got bridge domains, Policy groups such as VPCs, port channels, and interfaces, and just individual interfaces. And then encapsulations like VLAN and VXLAN. On the ne network side in layer three, we've got bridge domains, the SVIs on those bridge domains. So that's the anti-cast gateway or the, or, or the um, uh, pervasive SVI. And then we have layer three private networks, also known as contexts or VRFs. And they operate like VRF Lite. And then from layer four through seven in ACI, we have contracts, graphs, application network profiles, and EPGs. In ACI, the configuration steps though, that we typically do in configuration are divided into two separate categories. We have infrastructure administration, or the fabric administration. And we've got tenant administration. On the infrastructure side, we've got fabric discovery, out-of-band management, configure NTP servers, configure access policies for the ports, configure VLAN pools, we'll do physical domains, either VMM or, um, or physical domains, um, configurable attachable entity profiles, uh, and then we configure tenants and then tenant admin roles. On the tenant side, we have create layer three private networks or VRFs or contacts, whatever, whatever you want to call it create bridge domains, associate um, with those with a physical domain, as well as create EPGs and associate EPGs to both layer three private networks, uh, VRFs, and to bridge domains. Now, the purpose of having these two different categories is on the left, we have the tasks that would be performed by a fabric administrator or the team that's responsible for maintaining the overall ACI fabric. Um, on the right, we have the application-centric configurations, so ANPs and um, bridge domains, etc. And we can separate these out, so we can give a multi-tenant environment. We can give different tenants the ability to configure their own environment, whereas the infrastructure admin is responsible for configuring the overall environment. Um, you, the same team can do both, of course, um, but ACI was built from the ground up to be a multi-tenant environment. So having this tenant admin here on the right allows us to separate out those roles and those configuration items. <clears throat> Under fabric, so if you're going to be a fabric, if you're configuring the fabric, we have two different types of uh, policies. We have fabric policies, which configure interfaces that connect with the spine and the leaves. And we have the access policies. And these are, con these are uh, configuring the external facing interfaces, the interfaces that plug into the leaves, that go into your servers, to your virtual machine hypervisors, to your routers, load balancers, firewalls, etc. On the fabric side, we're gonna, create, we're gonna configure several policies such as NTP, um, ISIS, BGP, uh, timers, and so forth, as well as DNS. So let's talk about the out-of-band configuration. We have the ability to do out-of-band configuration on both the spines, leaves, and the APIC controller cluster. On the left here, we have a spine or a leaf. Um, I think this one is a, actually a leaf, but the spines have them as well. There's an out-of-band gigabit ethernet port that you can plug into your out-of-band network, out-of-band management network. On the right here, we have the, um, the APIC controller. So the APIC controller, we have um, a couple different inter. Whoop. 
On the right here, we have the APIC controller, and we have a couple different interfaces. We've got this UCS CIMC inter interface. Uh, traditionally, you'll configure the CIMC first. Um, you'll plug in a uh, standard VGA uh, cable through the breakout, giving you VGA um, um, video and uh, keyboard and mouse to do the initial configuration. You've got your APIC out-of-band management interfaces that you can dual home into two different uh, out-of-band switches. And they run in dedicated mode. And up here you've got the VIC card. This is the Cisco virtual interface card. There are two flavors of this card now. One flavor is um, copper and one flavor is SFP+. Plus. So it used to be that uh, you had to have the SFP Plus leafs in order to plug your APIC controllers into. But now you can order the APIC controllers with uh, 10 gig base T. So if you have just the 10 gig, 10 gig base T leafs, you can plug that in there as well. Um, something to keep in mind, the APIC controller is purchased as, a, uh, as a, an appliance. So they're based on the uh, UCS C-Series uh, C220M4s, um, at least right now, as of um, the uh, fall of uh, 2016, although the, you know, they, could, they could move to a different model. But as of the fall of 2016, they are based on C220s, uh, either M3 or M4s. They are purchased as APIC controllers. I think we mentioned this in the APIC uh, controller section. Uh, they are not purchased as generic C-series servers and then installed, and then they ha have the APIC software installed. Rather, they are purchased as a separate device, a separate SKU. You cannot take a regular C220 and turn it into an APIC controller. Um, so, and also, if they are, if they are, if you have a, an RMA issue, if you have a, like for example, a hard drive go bad or a DIM go bad, rather than RMAing the individual component, the, the usually will do the entire device. So we have the option for out of band or in band interfaces, and we can configure both at the same time. Generally speaking, though, we recommend um, you do one or the other um, because if you do both, it, ACI will prefer the in-band management interfaces. So if you have your out-of-band management network and you're trying to get NTP to work, for example, it may not work if you have both in-band and out-of-band interfaces. So if you want to do in-band, that's fine. If you want to do out of band, that's the one that's more common. Um, it, we just recommend you doing one, one or the other, so that way there's no um, confusion on the interfaces and which one is preferred. Uh, so typically, out of band interfaces are configured. The network time protocol. So in ACI, there's a lot of things that require a network time protocol for them to work correctly or to work at all. Um, and even even then, it's uh, generally a good idea for all network equ networking equipment to have NTP configured uh, to make sure that everything is on the same time. This is true for switches and routers and, and many other devices, uh, servers as well. Um, but for ECI, it's particularly important for atomic counters, for dynamic packet prioritization, and flowlet switching. And even if you don't have those turned on and they're, they're not turned on by default, it's still a good idea to have uh, NTP. So um, we want to make sure that time synchronization, we've got NTP configured. So um, first step when you configure your APIC controllers is to set the time um, on the, uh, the BIOS. We want to make sure that they're set to UTC uh, or Universal Coordinated Time. Um, in ACI, and once we do that, um, then we can go into the APIC controller when it's set up, and we can go into the GUI or command line or API, and then set the uh, date and time policy. So because the BIOS is on UTC, then we can set the APIC controller cluster for either UTC or a local time zone. Um, once we configure the policy, we configure the date format, and then we uh, apply it to a pod policy. Now, in ACI 2.0 and the Congo release, we can have more than one, one, one pod. And um, Before that, everything was pod one, but now we can have up to four as of 2.0, and that's uh, fall of uh, 2016, um, and perhaps uh, more later. So uh, first step is that we're going to go in and create a date and time policy. So we give the uh, give the policy a name, um, administrative state is enabled, uh, you can do authentication if you want to, and then you can configure your NTP servers and add a couple of those. Um, polling inter interval and, and which, which VRF you're gonna use or management EPG. Um, then we can set the, 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 the format, so um, 
for example, we're going to do local or UTC, and then we can configure our offset if we need any of that. And then we create our pod policy group, give it a name, pick our date and time policy. We can also, since we have the ability to do more than one pod, maybe those pods are in different data centers and different data centers have different sets of NTP servers to use something local perhaps. So you can do that as well and you can create uh, pod selectors. For example, here we've got pod two, uh, range from or, and two two, and then we pick a specific policy, um, policy pod policy group for that. So um, we also have the ability to configure other types uh, of settings uh, uniquely for per pod. So each pod can have its own set of settings, for example, um, date and time policy, group, pro, uh, group protocol, uh, BGP route reflector policy. We're going to have uh, different route reflectors in each, um, in each uh, pod as well. Access policy. So under fabric, we also have the ability to configure access policies. Um, there are two types of policies. We have the fabric policies, which configure interfaces that connect to the spine and leaves. And we have our access policies that go down. To configure our external facing interfaces, so these are the ones going down to our hosts or to our hypervisors or to our load balancers and firewalls and, and routers. You're gonna be an infrastructure administrator First thing you're going to do is go in and configure interface policies. These are things like link speed, whether or not you're going to do CDP or LDP, um, LECP, as well as other settings. We're going to take these individual settings, um, so they're configured individually, and then we're going to group them together and put them into a single interface, or multiple perhaps, but um, all of these different individual settings we can put into a interface policy group. And then we're going to ass assign those to interface policies, or interfa uh, interface policies, um, and then we add them to an interface profile to that we associate to physical interfaces. We pick their interfaces. And then our switch policy profile, which is going to um, be ha how we pick our, um, we pick our interfaces and on, and then we pick which leaves, which um, leaves and nodes we're going to uh, plug those into. I'm just gonna start this over. So for configuring external facing interfaces, we go into, uh, first thing we're gonna need to do, and we do this as our infrastructure administrator. So we have our physical and we have our logical. Physical is the interfaces, speeds, du uh, duplex perhaps, um, et cetera. And then on the logical side, we've got VLAN pools, uh, domains, physical domains, as well as our AEPs. Uh, on the physical side, we're going to create our interface policies. So these govern things like what, what the link speed is. Are we going to do auto negotiator? Are we going to hard set a link speed? Whether or not we're going to turn on CDP or LDP, um, whether or not we're going to use LACP for report channels or VPCs and so forth. We're going to take these interface policies and put them into an interface policy group, which we're then going to associate to interface um, profiles. And we associate those interface profiles to physical interfaces. But that's not, we're not done yet, there yet. We're going to go from our physical interfaces into our um, switch policy profiles, which are, um, so interface selectors pick the interfaces and then our switch policies select which switches we're going to use. On the logical side, we're gonna pick our VLAN pools. Um, we can have overlapping VLAN pools and we'll talk about that. We'll configure our domain. Um, so we're going to pick a domain, either that's a physical domain if we're plugging into like firewalls and load balancers, um, or um, if we're going to plug into hypervisors um, that are controlled by a VMM, a virtual machine manager like uh, vSphere, then we'll do a VMM domain. We associate that with a VLAN pool so that that has access, access to various VLANs, and then we're going to configure an AEP and associate those to policy groups and to a domain. So. Seems like a lot of work here, and, and, and it can be, especially for just turning up a few ports, but ACI was built to be scalable. It's a lot like how we did with uh, U, uh, UCS. So in Cisco UCS, we do a lot of profiles, um, and it involves a couple of extra steps, especially if you just want to turn a port up, it may, may seem a little bit excessive. But it really pays off when you start doing scale. Let's go back to this map here. So this is the fabric access policies, the logical model map. 
On the left here, we have items that are the purview of the tenants, and on the right, we have the, the infrastructure administrator or the fabric administrator. In the fabric tab here, we have global policies, interface policies, and switch policies. So these are all things that we're going to configure. We start out with typically with the uh, interface policies. So these are things like link, CDP, LACP. Uh, what's the link speed going to be? I'm going to do auto negotiate it. We're going to hard set it to a speed such as 1 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig. CDP, are we going to have the CDP turned on or off? Um, LACP, LDP, do we enable them or disable them? Um, and then we put them, take these individual policies, which are reusable, and we put them into one or more policy groups. The policy groups will go in with interface selectors um, and for the interface profiles. On the switch profiles, we'll have policies for the switch itself. So these are for the leaves. Um, we'll have a policy group to group our policies in together, and then we'll have a switch selector. Uh, the AEPs, the attachable endpoint profiles, will go in with domains, and domains will have VLAN pools. Uh, VLAN pools will um, either be static or dynamic, and the, VM, the, the domains will be either VMM domains or physical domains, depending on whether or not we're going to integrate with a hypervisor. The domains are what actually get attached to the EVG. So the domains and the AEPs, that's our translation from the infrastructure into the environment that we can um, grant to, de to the tenants. So let's take a look at this interface profile here. So under the fabric tab again, we have access policies, we have interface policies, policy groups. We're going to create a leaf access port policy group. So we're going to call this GE servers. For gigabit ethernet servers, the link level policy is going to be one gig. So that means we're going to hard code everything to one gig. CDP, CDP policy, we're going to enable MCP, LDP, enable spanning tree. We'll leave that to default. And there's some spanning tree settings we can set, even though ACI itself doesn't do spanning tree internal to the fabric. And then under policy groups, we'll have our various policy groups. And then you can see which of the individual policies. So, so interface policies, we have the individual policies like CDP or LDP. Then we group them together into a uh, policy group. Now, new to 2.0, you'll see here we have the leaf policy groups and the spine policy groups. The spine policy groups are only used in the situation where we're doing something called um, the interpod network, if we're going to do multipod. So that's when the typically the rule is that nothing plugs into the spines except the leaves. But in the case of uh, multipod, the spines will plug into what's called the IP and the interpod network. And we need to have a way to configure those interfaces as well. But for the most part, you're going to be configuring the leaf policy groups. So under interface uh, policies, we'll create the policies, policy groups, and then we'll create a, a leaf interface profile. So we give it a name, GE servers, and the identity. And these are going to, um, this will be the interface selector. So we're going to pick the interface numbers. Now, um, here we're mapping, we're going to match the interface IDs to the interface policy group. So these are interface 1, 1-2. One Something to keep in mind, this is not, we're not specifying the actual leafs yet. We're just picking interface numbers. So we haven't even picked the leaf yet, so this could be any leaf. We'll pick our interface policy group. Um, so that's right there. And then it's a, collect, it's a basket of these policies here. And then we've got our interface policy group here. So now we've done policies, policy groups, and interface profiles. We're going to go with our switch profiles and, and move there. So under switch policies, we have create leaf profile. Again, we can, now we can configure um, spine profiles in case we have to uh, configure interpod networks for multipod. But we're going to create a leaf profile. We'll call this here leaf 101. And what leafs, uh, so this is the identity. This name can be anything, but we're going to select the specific leaves. In this case, we're going to do 101. And then we're going to map it to a policy group. So that's something we did in the interface uh, uh, profiles. So leaf 101 is going to be uh, attached to T01 um, for a policy group. And then we're going to map those and join them to domains. 
So under VLAN, we're gonna create a VLAN pool. Uh, so we typically will create a range if we're gonna make these dynamic. Um, that allows like a VMM domain, for example, in VMware, when I create a uh, port group in VMware, if I have VMware integration, it will create a, or if I create an EPG in ACI, it will go into VMware, into vCenter, and actually automatically create a port group on the DVS or the AVS. And then um, if we're using VLANs and if we're using the, the VMware DVS, we are, then it will configure the port group for a specific VLAN picked out of this pool. Again, all this is done automatic. And then automatically trunk it up from the ESXi host up to the ACI fabric. And this is done automatically. So we're going to pick our, our VLAN um, allocation. We can do a static allocation too. Um, but typically we'll do dynamic, especially with VMware or other uh, VMMs. We'll create um, a physical domain. So the name, we're going to call this uh, physical domain. We're going to have our um, attachable entity profile, and we're going to map it with a VLAN pool. So this is mapping the, um, the interfaces, policy groups, profi port profiles, etc. cetera. Um, we're going to map that to a physical domain. And then here we've got our AEPs. We create our attachable entity point profiles. We're going to call it test AEP. We're going to pick our physical domains. So this will be a physical domain uh, from VLAN 2060 to 2069. We're going to associate with a policy group. Leaf ports are associated to only one AEP at a time. Overlapping VLAN pools should not be associated with the same AEP. You can overlap VLAN pools. Um, you can even have locally significant VLANs but they should not be associated to the same AEP. Uh, VLAN is provisioned and enabled on LeafPort based on EPG events. Um, static binding on a LeafPort or LD, LDP discovery through a VMM domain such as uh, vCenter. So back to our map here, configure it for the logical and physical. On the logical side, we again, we create our interface policies. We create our interface policy groups. Um, then we create our interface profile, so that selects the interfaces. And then we create our switch profiles. We map them into an AEP along with a VLAN, uh, with a physical or VMM domain, which includes VLAN pools. And that gets mapped into our physical environment here. We can do VBCs, uh, virtual port channels in ACI. Uh, they work pretty much like they do in traditional Nexus. Uh, and by the way, there is no difference between virtual port channel and ether channel. Ether channel is the term we use in the catalyst world. Virtual port channel is the term we use in the in the Nexus world. And there there is no difference between them. They're all based on 802.3 AD, which is an IEEE standard, or uh, better known now as 802.1 AX. Uh, it's new uh, IEEE working group. Um, of course, that's just straight up, that's just standard lag. Um, and this would be considered M lag, MC lag, which is multi link aggregation, multi chassis link aggregation. So here we've got two different chassis. So it is, um, it is basically the, whatever the host or switch is connecting to thinks it's plugged into the same switch. So VPC, VSS, whatever, um, M lag, MC lag, all that is to create um, the illusion that these two switches are the same switch. So in ACI, we support VPC again. We do it a little bit differently though. We don't have a peer link. Um, so no peer link is required or peer keep alive is required. Also, all this stuff is, is automatically configured. The one thing that we do know is we need to have, uh, so each individual switch, so let's say this is switch one, this is switch two. Each individual switch has its own TEP address, tunnel endpoint address. If we're gonna do a VPC, we need uh, a, an AnyCast VTEP um, so that packets can be sent via ECMP across the fabric to either of these and still get forwarded to um, the host or switch. And what the VTEP, the, the AnyCast does is allow us to send out and source packets from this VTEP and then accept um, packets coming in from this AnyCast VTEP. So um, the, peer the peer communications between the two switches happens over the fabric. So it happens over through the spines. Path recovery also happens through the fabric and not the peer link. Um, CFS is replaced by AFS, ACI Fabric Services. And, multi and multicast forward selection, which peer will, will forward the frame is done that way as well. 
So traffic is sourced and des destined to the Anycast VPC VTEP address. So typically, if you're just a single homing device, um, the TEP address is whatever individual switch you're plugged into, and all the VXLAN traffic, the internal VXLAN or EVXLAN traffic is sourced and destined from that individual VTEP. Um, in the case of uh, if we're doing VPC, then the all the packets entering and leaving this VPC interface are sourced and destined to the VPC Anycast address. So both of these switches will have the same um, TEP address. So that requires an additional TEP address um, to be assigned. If um, we do have a downlink failure on the peer, bound sentry created pointing the peer's VTEP far end points, um, reachable via the port channel. All MAC and IP leaf bindings for the specific virtual port channel are removed from the COOP database in the spine proxy. On failure of a peer, the remaining leaf converts all VPC ports to non-local VPC ports. So that way uh, traffic hits uh, an individual tap instead of, instead of being sent to both. And configuring our VPC interface. So um, interface policies, um, policy groups. We'll create a VPC policy group instead of a uh, leaf uh, access policy group. And then um, it works fairly um, standard to how we do it in such as the Nexus 5000. So uh, Nexus 5000 here, we've got our interfaces, uh, do the range here allow the VLANs we want, um, we'll do Spanish report fast trunk, and then channel group mode 10 mode active. Active of course means we're going to run LACP.